This video is about analyzing electric circuits using the mesh current method. Sometimes it's called mesh analysis or loop analysis. Mesh analysis is based on the work of a German physicist named Gustav Kirchhoff. Here's a picture of Kirchhoff. After developing what we now call Kirchhoff's laws as a student, they became his doctoral dissertation. Kirchhoff's voltage law is the basis of mesh analysis. It says that, that the total increase in voltage around a mesh, or loop, in an electric circuit is equal to the sum of the voltage drops around that mesh. In other words, charges raised to an electrical potential by a voltage source will lose all of that potential as they travel around a mesh on their way back to that source. But what, exactly, is a mesh? A mesh, sometimes called a loop, is a closed path that starts and ends at the same place. But in circuit analysis, a mesh is a particular type of loop that does not enclose any other loops. In this example, the red and blue loops are meshes. The green loop is not a mesh because it encloses the red and blue meshes. Here's a circuit with two batteries and three resistors. Let's find the voltage across and the current through R3. So there's the voltage. And there's the current. The first step is to identify all of the meshes and label their mesh currents. In this circuit we have one, two meshes. This one, or mesh one, I'm going to call that I1, and this one, mesh two, I will call I2. The next step is to mark the electrical polarity of every component. Since we're going around this direction, and this is the current I1, current is going to flow from positive to negative through R1. It's going to flow from positive to negative through R3, and it's going to flow up through the battery but we don't change the polarity on the battery because these terminals are already determined by the chemical reaction inside. So if the current flows out of the battery, it is discharging. If the current flows into the battery, it's charging. But the polarity is always going to be plus on this side and minus on that side. The blue loop is going to go up through R3, creating a polarity of plus to minus. It's going to go through R12, creating a polarity of plus to minus. And the battery is going to be minus to plus. Now we write the equations for each mesh. If we start here, I'm going to call that zero. We're going to start at the point zero volts and flow up through the battery. We're going to increase 10 volts. So plus 10. Remember all these voltages should all add up to zero. As we go through R1, we're going to drop some more voltage. So I'm going to put a minus sign there. And we don't know how many volts this is, but we do know that voltage equals resistance times current. And we do know the resistance. It's 6 ohms. If we multiply that by the current flowing through it, we'll have the voltage. And the current is I1. So far, we have gone up 10 volts, and then we've dropped 6 times I1 volts. Now we flow down through R3, and we drop some more voltage. Minus 
four times I1. But this resistor is different than R1 because R3 has two currents flowing in it. The red current flows down, causing a voltage drop, but the blue current flows up, and in the red loop, the voltage is increasing, so we need to add that voltage back in. Continuing around the loop, we're back at zero. On the second loop, if we start in the bottom left-hand corner again, now it doesn't really matter which corner you start in, I'm just being consistent. We'll start at zero. We flow up through R3, causing a voltage drop of four times I two volts. But remember, this resistor has two currents in it. The red current flows down, and on the blue side of the loop, that's a voltage increase. So I'm going to add that voltage back in. Continuing around through R2, we drop some more volts. In fact, we drop 12 times I2 volts. And then as we go through the battery, we increase 30 volts. And we're back at zero. If we gather like terms, we can put this system of equations into a familiar format. So we have 6, 4, that's a total of minus 10 times I1 plus 4I2. And on the other side of the equal sign, we'll move the 10 and make that a negative 10. This equation has four I1s, four times I1, minus 16 times I2, equals, we'll take the 30, put it on the other side of the equal sign, and that becomes a minus 30. Our goal is to find I1 and I2. And to do that, let's use a calculator that's recommended for this course. It's an HP 35. If you don't have one like this, at the end of the video are some resources where you can watch other videos on how to solve a system of equations or even use an online calculator to do it. In this case, we're going to go to the equation menu, scroll down to the solver for two equations and two unknowns, the two by two linear solver, and we're going to input all the coefficients to these equations. So here's A, B, C, D, E, F. And A is a minus 10. So there's 10, change sign. Go to the next variable, it's a 4. Next variable is a minus 10, so there's 10, change sign. Next variable is a 4. E is a minus 16, so 16, change sign. And finally, we have a negative 30, so 30, change sign and we solve. The X is really I1, which is 1.944 amps. And Y, which is really I2, is 2.361 amps. So I1 is 1.944 amps. And I2 is 2.3 six one amps. Okay, here's a fresh page. We have I1 and I2. 
recall that I1 equals 1.944 amps and I2 equals 2.361 amps. Now I1 flows around this way. I2 flows also clockwise and because both of these numbers are positive it means that we put the arrows in the right direction. But that means there are two currents flowing in R3. The red current flows down and the blue current flows up and you're saying, wait a minute, you can't have two currents flowing in opposite directions through R3. And you're right. But remember, these are only mathematical currents. The real current is the difference between them, and it flows in the direction of the larger one. Since I2 is bigger, the real current is going to flow up. Let's call that I3. So I3 equals the larger current, 2.361 amps, minus the smaller current, 1.944 amps, and that equals 0 0.417 amps. Well, let's go back to our original question. We wanted to find I3 and V3 across R3. And we discovered that I3 is 0 0.417 milliamps. But that it actually flows in the opposite direction of what we thought. So let's get rid of the wrong one, the wrong direction. And that means the voltage polarity is backward as well, so let's get rid of that and replace that with the correct polarity. So we have 0 0.417 milliamps flowing up. How many volts drop across R3? Well, V3 is going to be equal to the current I3, which is 0 0.417 milliamps, times the value of R3, which is 4 ohms. And if we multiply those together, we get 1.667 volts. Well, now it's your turn. Here's an interesting looking circuit. This one has a 15 volt battery, 6 ohm resistor, 12 ohm resistor, 4 ohm resistor, and a constant current source. Now this looks more difficult than the last one, but it actually makes things easier. Because if you call this current I1, and this current I2, you already know that I2 is 1.5 amps. If you need an online calculator to, to solve your system of equations, here's a hyperlink to one. You can go there. And pause the video now, try to work it out, and then finish playing the video to see what the correct answers are. Did you get it right? I originally drew I1 going clockwise and I2 going clockwise. And then I went to do the first equation, starting here at the zero corner. Zero minus 15 volts minus six times I1 minus four times I1 plus four times right there. But instead of writing I2, I put in 1.5 amps because we know what I2 really is. And 4 times 1.6 or 1.5 equals 6, which gives us this equation, 
one unknown, which we can easily solve, and we discover that I1 is a negative 0.9 amps. What that really means is I drew this arrow backward. So if I change the direction and make it run the way it's supposed to, the difference in the two currents is actually going to be the sum because the red current flows up, the blue current flows up, I add those together, the 1.5 amps plus the 0.9 amps to get 2.4 amps and 2.4 amps times 4 ohms is 9.6 volts. So there's the voltage across, here's the current through. And here are the resources for solving a system of equations. You can watch a video about how to do it with any calculator using something that's called Kramer's Rule. Maybe you've heard it called determinants before. Or you can go to the online calculator at the bottom and it works very similarly to the HP 35 I showed you. Alternately, you can get the user's manual for your uh, calculator online and somewhere in there it's going to tell you how to use matrices if your calculator will, will do matrix arithmetic. And you can also solve these systems of equations that way. Have fun!